All right, today we're going to be dealing with Enoch. All right. Now, Enoch was shown everything in creation by the Most High. Okay. So, by default, it's made him a God. Let me show you what I'm talking about. But first, before I show you what I'm talking about, we're going to find out who showed Enoch all this stuff. You're going to be surprised when you find out. But first, I must lay down the law of engagement. See, Enoch is Thoth the Atlantean. He was known as Thoth and Atlantis. Okay? Enoch has many books. Let me show you what I'm talking about. In the Greek language, he was known as Hermes, Trimagistus. This is another book of Enoch. This is the book of Enoch. Translated from the Ethiopic with introduction and in, in notes. This is also another book of Enoch, which is Thoth, the Atlantean, or Tahuti, or Ningazita in the Sumerian tablets, or Quasiketel. He went by so many different names. So, I'm going to be touching on all these books because I'm going to bring some powerful information for it and a lot of it for a lot of people they're not going to understand it but the way I'm going to break it down oh you're going to have to understand it now according to this book Enoch listen to this grew I there from a child unto manhood being taught by my father the elder mysteries until in time there grew within me the fire of wisdom until it burst into a consuming flame. Now this is who taught Enoch until he grew within the fire flame now. Alright, he was taught by his father growing up as a child into manhood. Being taught by my father. Y'all pay attention to this now. Until in time grew within the fire of wisdom until it burst into a consuming flame. Man, y'all ain't getting this. Look at that. Thutmose. Thutmose. Father of Thoth. High Priestess of Undel. The mouthpiece, the mouthpiece of the children of light. And the dweller on Unal. And the kings and people of the islands. Remember this. Until there grew within the fire of wisdom. Now, in case y'all don't know what the fire of wisdom is, that is the kundalini. Okay? It is the inner sun. It is the almond rod, the hidden light. That's what it is. Almond means hidden. Ra means sun. That is that inner solar flare, a cosmic serpentine fire. And remember that the serpent or the cobra in the ancient world was always revered as something of wisdom. See, fire of wisdom until it burst into a consuming flame. That means that his kundalini had erupted or went up his spinal cord, which in the Bible is known as the tree of life. Okay, now let me show you what I'm talking about. Because, first of all, the kundalini was known as set. Okay, or soot. Stored in the root chakra. is also known as Satan. Because the word Satan derived from the word soot. Or set. In the Egyptian mythos. But all of this is esoteric. Alright. And what happened to Lucifer? He fell. He fell from the pioneer glen. And went from the seven and six chakra to the first chakra. This is why it consumed and went back up. See? Burst into a consuming flame. That means that Lucifer or Uriel went back up into the heavenly realm, which is up there in the Pioneer Glen, where Jacob wrestled with the angel until he saw the face of God, and he called them Pioneer. Pioneer Glen. So, let me show you what I'm talking about. So, going into the book of Enoch, this is what we get. Now, we're going to find out who taught Enoch. All right, this is in the book of Enoch, as you can see. 
Y'all gonna be surprised who taught Enoch. The book of the choruses of the luminaries of heaven. How it is with each one of them as to their classes, their governments, and their times, as to their names and origin, and as to their months with their leader Uriel. Y'all Google Uriel so y'all can see what it means. Okay? It is talking about the Kundalini, a Lucifer, the light bringer. All right? And I'm pretty sure it means um, the light of God. The word Uriel means the light of God. Okay, a holy angel who was with me showed to me in their description as it is, as it is, he showed to me and how it is with respect to all the years of the world and to eternity till a new creation is made, which will continue to eternity. So, like I said, once the kundalini raises up your spinal cord, you are blessed like Jacob was. Jacob was blessed, okay? But it didn't tell you what he was really blessed with. But actually, he was blessed with all types of abilities. Like, if you raise the kundalini, you can literally um, tap into the Akashic Record, see in time, see how everything was created. You can try time travel back in time. You can cause shit to levitate depending on what Uriel bless you with or the Kundalini bless you with you are able to even understand speaking some tongues you might be blessed with that when somebody speak tongues speaking tongues you will be able to translate the language what they're saying okay you'll be able to speak languages that only you would understand and you'll be able to bring back dead languages that was once here and now no more exist you'll be able to teleport at will you be able to um did i say cause shit to levitate with your mind you'd be able to um become very telepathic these are the things that come with raising the kundalini you'll become clairvoyant okay things like this but anyway if you see look here let, let me show you so i can get to the point now we still in the book of enoch now look what enoch says concerning uriel and I saw another course and law for her, making her monthly course according to the law. I'm just trying to get to a point here. Okay. And Uriel, the holy angel, who is the leader of them all. What the fuck? Show me all things. Now they say Enoch walked with God. But what goddamn God? It was Uriel. Show me all things. Remember in the Bible it said Enoch was showed all things by God. He walked with God. Listen at this. And I wrote all their positions as he showed them to me. And I wrote down their months as they were in the appearance of their lights till 15 days are completed. Bottom line, he was shown stuff by Uriel. Okay, the Kundalini fire. Let me show you what I'm talking about one more time just in case y'all forgot. Okay, we going right back in. The emerald tablets, the thoth, as you see at the very bottom. Emerald tablets. Where my finger at? My pinky at the very bottom. We back in the emerald tablets. See? Grew I there from a child into manhood, being taught by my father, the elder, mysteries. Now, when he talking about his father, he actually talking about Enki, okay? Which is Yahweh. Okay? Until in time, there grew within the fire of wisdom. Until it burst into a consuming flame. So what he's telling you is that he was taught by outside God. But then he reached his own Godhood. Alright, because we are gods. We are all God. Once the Kundalini is activated. So he became a God himself. This is why in Egypt he was known as the God of wisdom. See, within the fire of wisdom. Until it burst into a consuming flame. He was known as Tahuti in Egypt. And he was known as a god. Because he reached his godhood. See, I don't think y'all understand. So I'm going to go on this book. And we're going to break down what the Kundalini is. Or we're going to break down what Uriel is. Because Uriel is actually a certain energy. Alright? But there is an intelligence in that energy. 
Let me show you what I mean. Right here, Kundalini. This is a life force. It is the life force of the body. Just as a car cannot run without having electricity to fix, I mean, to fire the mixture in the cylinders, so humans cannot live in the body without the life force of Kundalini. In Eastern mythology, the Kundalini is likened to the engine of a serpent coiled up below the base of the spine. As this special force is released or awakened, it surges up through different chakras and makes a person aware of exoteric things. It awakens clairvoyance, telepathy, psychochemistry, and enables one to live between two worlds, moving from one to the other at will without inconvenience. That is interdimensional travel. Okay, it just says this special force is released or awakened and surges up through the different chakras. Let me see. I don't think y'all get it. Let me run it back one more time for you so I can drill this in your subconscious. Okay, I'm going back in this book again so you can see what I mean. Did not it say after that he was taught by his father the elder mysteries he was saying in time that grew within the fire of wisdom until it burst into consuming flame. Okay? I still don't think y'all get it. Let me drive the point home. You see that? I saw another cause in law for her. Wait, let's get to the point. And Uriel, the holy angel, who is the leader of them all, showed me all things. And I wrote down their positions as he showed them to me. Bottom line, Uriel showed him everything, which is the kundalini. And yet the Bible say Enoch walked with God. Shit, what goddamn God? Okay, we know according to study, what I brought forth, that he was taught by his father, okay, Thut Thutmus. Also, Inky, according to the Sumerian tablets or the lost books of Inky. All right, and he was known, known as Ningazita. But he was also taught, he became enlighten, enlightened in inside his body. The body is the temple of God. Do you not know that the Holy Spirit dwells within you? Do you not know that Jesus Christ is within you? This is in the book of parentheses. So, and Jesus Christ is within you? Who the hell he talking about? Who the hell is Jesus Christ? Why is Lucifer called the morning star and Jesus is also called the morning star? Why is Jesus known as the, um, the truth and the light? And Lucifer is known as the light bringer because they one and the same. Jesus Christ is within you, but it's actually telling you that Lucifer is within you, the light bringer, a.k.a. Kundalini. All right? That's who Lucifer is. He brings light to your dormant pineal gland, which is a miniature universe as above, so below. When you look at the cosmos outside of yourself, you are only looking on the in you're only looking at the inside of your body on a macrocosmic scale. So when you see stars at night, you are only looking at photons in your body. Okay? When you see the sun and the planets orbiting around it, you know, through I don't know, images or some shit you Google. All you're looking at is protons and electrons orbiting around the nucleus. Okay, as above, so below. This is what it is. But let me get back on this Kundalini. This Uriel. Okay, bouncing back in this book so I can connect all these dots so that nothing will be left out. All will be understood. Now, I mentioned the power that comes with activating Kundalini. How it awakens clairvoyance, telepathy, psychomantry, and enables ones to live between different worlds and all that without inconvenience. The kundalini is a dangerous thing indeed, and one should not try to waken that kundalini without absolutely adequate supervision from an adept. Okay, you cannot do it by reading the book. If you meddle about and awaken your kundalini the wrong way, it can lead to madness. Just ask Gobi Krishna. He'll tell you he fucked it up and his ass was aching every day. Just read the book, Kundalini, The Evolutionary Energy in Man by Gopi Krishna. He breaks it down 
what happens when you raise it wrong. See, there are two energies within this electrical current or Kundalini or Uriel. It is nothing to play with. There is an energy called Shiva. All right. And there's an energy called Shakti. Shiva is a masculine energy. This is the law of gender. The law of gender is in everything. And oh, yeah, don't worry about it. We're going to touch on the law of gender real soon once we go into this book. But first, let's deal back with this. All right. But if you raise that masculine energy, Shiva, and a lot of people think it's a woman, Shiva is not. Okay. It's not. So do some research on that. But if you raise that Shiva by itself, oh, you will have nerve damage. And if you are Caucasian and you raise this Kundalini, it's all for you. If you don't have this neuro you melanin, you're going to burst into flames because you can't digest it. If you can't digest the rays coming from the sun, you damn sure ain't finna digest that inner sun that's on the inside of your body. So I would advise you not to even try this unless you want to commit suicide. But until then, let me continue moving forward. Like I said, the Kundalini is a dangerous thing. All right. If you don't have the right melanin base, which is the universal substance. But anyway, he said it can lead to madness, awakening it in the wrong way. So what you will want to do is raise Shiva and Shakti together. This is union. This is balance. And this is harmony. One can't exist without the other. Just like the devil and God can't exist without the other because they are ancient lovers of one union. But anyway, for more information on that, go to my video. It's called secret it's called the hidden history or it might be called the secret history the, the secret hidden history of god and the devil and it breaks that down but anyway moving on <clears throat> it is one of the most dangerous things in this world to try you heard that to raise kundalini without knowing what you are doing the average human is only one tenth conscious perhaps actually that flatters the average human the point is That if one can raise the kundalini, one becomes very much more conscious. Oh yeah, I know, trust me. You don't use no 10% of your brain. You unlock 100. You're able to do some amazing shit. This is why I say Mantak Chill, he ain't raising that kundalini. He done wrote all these books basically on how to raise the kundalini. But trust me, he ain't raising that kundalini. Otherwise, he would have some amazing shit to talk about. Because I can talk about some amazing shit. That I'm not finna go into because half of y'all won't believe shit anyway, so I just keep it to myself. So anyway, uh, then it says, one becomes very much more conscious. One can dominate others. But when one has raised the kundalini, one loses the desire to dominate others for self-gain. All right. People wonder where exactly is the kundalini. Where is at, at the base of the spine? The kundalini force actually st starts midway between the organ of the generation he talking about the nutsack okay and the origin of secretion which is the anal so it's right between your anal cavity and your testicle for a male and and uh, likewise for the woman for her organ all right so which is the gooch area now having gained now having given you that information it is suggested that you do not try experiments with the Kundalini unless you have a real guru who can help you and you must have utter faith in that guru. If you have no guru for the moment, remember, when the student is ready, the guru will appear. But the guru knows and the student does not know when the student is ready. Okay. Got my point across with that. Hope y'all understood it. I'm finna move on. Now we'll be going into the universal laws. This is also written by Thoth, a.k.a. Hermes Trinagistus. This is why they call it a study of the hermetic philosophies of ancient Egypt and Greece. Remember now, the Greeks were taught by the Etruscans, which are a form of custodians of the Egyptians. Okay? Because they came from Egypt. Like I said, the Egyptian language is trust is trustworthy because no cave dweller came out the cave speaking no Greek language. Okay, you can just shit. I I done already made a video called "White Supremacy Is a Lie." You don't just check it out. It shows you documented facts that there were black people 
that taught the Greeks how to speak language. Count Vonet states that, and he was a French European. Wait a minute, let me show you what I'm talking about, because I like to bag shit up. All right, taking a quick detour to prove my point, we go into black out through whitewash. Now here we have it: the African origin of Europe, the African origin of European civilization. All right, Western white civilization is founded on black African civilization. Okay, in 1787, the distinguished French scholar Count C. Bonnet wrote in amazement. This, this race of black men is the very race to which we owe our arts and our sciences. In sciences, our sciences, and even our use of speech. Later he wrote, see what I'm talking about? Thank you. That's all I needed right there. That's my bone. Now, let me finish dropping these nuclear bones. And the scholarly classic intercollective George Higgins write, I shall, in the course of this work, produce a number of extraordinary facts which will be quite sufficient to prove that a black race in very early times had more influence over the affairs of the world than has been lately suspected and the influence have not entirely passed away all I need right now now getting back on course we gonna go into the universal laws and once we get in these universal laws Men and women, y'all gonna be shocked. Cause I gotta bring something to the fourth breath. Alright, going into the universal law, the seven hermetic principles. These are laws. I don't care what planet you on, what state, country, town, I don't give a shit where you at. This applies to anybody in the universe. This is not a law that is some made up shit that somebody put in Congress. The laws in Congress it's some bullshit to keep people in prison. Okay, these are the real laws. These are the only laws you really need. The rest of them laws, you do not need them shits. Okay, if everybody just go by these universal laws, we will live in perfect harmony. This is the only law we need. We don't need none of that shit in government. This is all you need. You need to master these laws right here. Know the cause and effect. Understand principle. Understand the law of mentalism. Shit, just learning the law of cause and effect. Okay. And the law of attraction. Where, where, where we at? Okay. Here we go. The principle of mentalism. That's the first one. The second one, the principle of correspondence. The third one, the principle of vibration. The fourth one, the principle of polarity. The fifth one, principle of rhythm. The sixth, the principle of cause and effect. The seventh, the principle of gender. Okay. Correspondence. That is the law of attraction. Let me move on. Principle one of mentalism. The mind, the all is mind. The universe is mental. You see? Y'all don't get it. Now, I'm going to touch on some of this, but I'm not going to go deep in detail into all this because it would take entirely too long. I'm just going to get my point across. This principle embodies the truth that all is mind. It explains that the all, which is the substantial reality underlying all the outward manifestation and appearances, which we know under the term of the material universe. Now, let me stop and say something. Like I said in many of my videos, we are all projections of the creator experiencing itself in different dimensions, which is the mental, the whole universe is mental. It is ever expanding. All right. The Holy Quran talks about uh, everything is a thought of Allah. Okay. Meaning that everything is literally a thought of the Creator itself in physical manifestation as far as this third dimension goes. So this is what makes us one. We are one. <laughs> Except those who lack the divine substance, which is melanin. So for you, but you just don't qualify. You some like a artificial human. That's just what it is. Now, as you can see, right here, it also explains that all the phenomenal world, all all the phenomenal world or universe is simply a mental creation of the all. Subject to the laws 
of created things and that the universe as a whole and in its parts are or units has its existence existence in the mind of the all. Y'all get the point. We moving on. And now we have the principle or the law of correspondence as above so below. This principle embodies the truth that there is always a correspondence between the laws and phenomena of the various planes of being and life. The old hermetic annexing ran in these words as above so below as below so above and the grasping of this principle gives one the means of solving many a dark paradox and hidden secret of nature there are planes beyond our knowing but when we apply the principle of correspondence to them we are able to understand much that would otherwise be unknown unknowable to us. This principle is of universal application and manifestation on the various planes of the material, mental, and spiritual universe. It is in universal law. The ancient Hermeticists consider this principle as one of the most important mental instruments by which men was able to pray, pry in, aside the obstacles which hid from view the unknown okay anyway it is is used even towards our develop Isis to the extent that a glimpse of the face of the goddess might be caught so anyway this is the law of correspondence we went over that and then we went over the law and the law of correspondence has a lot to do with the law of attraction okay that's all it is then we went over the law of mentalism. Everything is mind. Everything that you see came from a thought of somebody or it came from the universal substance of, of the universal mind itself. It's a big old wave of consciousness. It's a frequency. The universe is. Everything sits in a universe which is a womb of consciousness. Everything sits in the darkness. Everything sits in the womb. Now let's move on to the principle or the law of vibration. Nothing rests. Everything moves. Everything vibrates. Believe it or not, this is what it is. It may look like it's steel or rock, but that shit is vibrating. Those small molecules in it is vibrating. This principle embodies the truth that everything is in motion. Everything vibrates. Nothing is at rest. Facts which modern science endorses in which each new scientific discovery tends to verify and yet this hermetic principle was enunciated thousands of years ago by the masters of ancient Egypt this principle explains that the differences between different manifestations of matter energy mind and even spirit result largely from varying varying rates of vibration from the all. It's talking about the mental. The, the all. Remember the all is what? There we go. The all is mind. The universe is mental. Now let's go back to where he was. Alright. Going back where he was. Where we was. From the all which is pure spirit down to the grossest form of matter. All is in vibration. The higher the vibration the higher the position in the scale. The vibration where I'm at. The vibration of spirit is at such an infinite rate of intensity and rapidity that it is particularly at rest. Now that's fast. That's fast. Shit going so fast it looks like it's resting. Just as a rapidly moving wheel seems to be motionless. Exactly. And at the and at the order. Oh, and at the other end of the scale, there are gross forms of matter the, whose vibrations are so slow as to seem at rest. Between these poles, there are millions upon millions of varying degrees of vibration. 
from corpusel and electron, atom and molecule, the worlds and universes, everything is in vibratory motion. All right, y'all get the point. I'm pretty sure you get the point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this and I'm going to continue with a part two. Stay tuned.